There is a video of me on YouTube, which thankfully doesn't have my surname on it, but it's called Stinky the Dolphin, and it's Stinky the Dolphin trying to have sex with me, which is quite, uh, it's quite and it's got about three million views or something, but luckily it doesn't have my surname on it, so no one else gets to, it doesn't come up every time someone Googles my name. So for that reason, I don't like dolphins very much. Hello, my name's David Diley. I'm with Scuba Diver Magazine at the Go Dive in 2020 show, asking all the important questions that you need the answers to. So we're here with world famous underwater photographer, Alex Mustard. And what this is, Alex, is quick fire questions. Okay. To get the information out of you that the people at home F8. are desperate to know. <laughs> They're desperate to know. No so, camera geekery. Uh, no, I don't think there is any camera. Although we could talk about cameras for okay. hours, probably, yes. but we won't. We won't we'll bore them at the home with that. Yeah. yeah. So we know who you are. I've already done an introduction. Alex Mustard, MBE, isn't it? Yes. Congratulations. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Right. So I'm sure you've done interviews before, but nothing quite like this. So keep the answers as short and concise as you can. Okay. Quick fire round. How many dives do you have so far? Do you think under your belt? Um, four thousand seven hundred and fifty, ish. I did, I did 4,700 at the end of last year. I've done 49 so far this year. Wow. I usually do about 300, 350 each year. So okay. I like being underwater. Me too, yeah. me too. So what would you say is the best place you've dived so far? Um, personally, I always try and be most excited about what I'm going to shoot next. I think as a photographer, the more passionate you are about your subjects, the better you'll shoot them. So I tend not to dream about past great things. I'm always trying to stay in the present, be excited about where I'm going next, make that the thing I most want to see, and then I tend to take better pictures of it. So Cuba's up next, so Cuba. Nice. Worst place you've dived? Ooh. I think the only time I don't enjoy diving is when I have problems with my camera gear. So it's nothing to do with the location. It's the last place that my camera went, did something wrong. Actually, I was underwater on my last trip and we had an earthquake. And it was a really, really big earthquake in the Cayman Islands. There's been video of it, viral video of it everywhere. Um, but I didn't even notice it was going on underwater because I was using a, a camera system that wasn't mine. And part of it wasn't working for a few minutes. And I was so annoyed with the camera, I didn't notice the earthquake. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the worst dive when you don't even notice the earthquake. <laughs> so I guess, um, I mean, do you still have a bucket list destination that you've not done yet? Oh, absolutely. And I actually, because I think I quite early on knew I was going to dive the rest of my life. I didn't immediately go out and do everything. So for me, there's still loads of places I haven't been, loads of experiences I haven't wanted. But also the thing about diving is so many of the experiences are so amazing, you want to do them again anyway. So even in the bucket list includes places that I've already done and already been and already seen. Because I just so want to do them again, they're still on the bucket list. Do you pee in your wetsuit? Um, actually, no. Um, and it's actually, and it's not because I think it's disgusting. I actually now find it really hard. I used to have no problem peeing in my wetsuit. And the best tip that you can give to any diver ever, go to a pet shop and buy carpet shampoo for pet owners. It has an enzyme in it that gets rid of the smell of wee instantly. And I just take a little bottle of that on the liverboard with me. When all the wetsuits smell too much, I walk down the line and spray it. <laughs> One spray of it, it gets rid of the smell. It's amazing. So, but I don't pee in my wetsuit. I find it really hard. And actually, it's a big joke on boats. I come out of the water and I have to run to the toilet. Well, I can give you a bit of advice on how to learn how to pee in a wetsuit. Because I was exactly the same. I psychologically could not get my head around peeing in a wetsuit. I can't pee like when I'm swimming either. So what I did was it was on a trip to Egypt and I was wearing a shorty. Yeah. And because it was in a shorty, if I just pulled the leg open a little bit, it didn't feel like I was wearing trousers which I think my head, my brain got around it that I could just shoot the pee out you of the shorty <laughs> and then so just shot a big jet of pee out. So that wasn't yeah. so bad actually and now three or four times a dive it's just like a constant no, yeah. stream. I have a rule that if it starts putting, off me, my, putting me off my photography I would always pee in my wetsuit. My photography is much more important than. but I find it really hard. I have to actually really stop and, and concentrate and, and I never get around to it. The owner of the blue Dacia Sandero SL63 so we'll just wait, just wait for this to pass. <laughs> this is the first time this has happened while we've been doing this. Can you believe it? But luckily it's not a day. But what I think is good and very useful for the people at home is that, that, that we are covering these important issues. Oh, yeah, and it it's, is. And if you're not going to talk about these things with divers, when are you going to talk about yeah, them? Yeah, and I've been in that position myself as well when you're filming something and it's incredible and you can't take your eyes off it, but in the back of your mind it's just, I need a wee, or even yeah. worse... And I it's think the other when end. you dive with a goal in mind as a photographer, as a filmmaker, 
you've got a real focus and if something's taking you away from that focus you won't do your best work that's it's working well, that's yeah. what a lot of people don't realize you are working yeah no yeah for me going underwater i enjoy it hugely but i'm in the zone from the moment i go underwater like i'm thinking about photography and almost nothing else sharks or dolphins Sharks. There is a video of me on YouTube, which thankfully doesn't have my surname on it, but it's called Stinky the Dolphin, and it's Stinky the Dolphin trying to have sex with me, which is quite a, it's quite, and it's got about three million views or something. But luckily, it doesn't have my surname on it, so no one else gets to. It doesn't come up every time someone Google's my name. So for that reason, I don't like dolphins very much. So Stinky the Dolphin, we'll be remembering that. We'll yeah. check that when we get home. Uh, wetsuit or dry suit? Um, wetsuit. I really enjoy diving in both i have dry suit trips planned for this year and and next year as well both uk diving and and overseas diving in dry suit i think actually it's one of the things that a lot of uk divers don't do enough of is do overseas dry suit places there's amazing cold and temperate water diving in the pacific and the the temperate pacific is just phenomenal the the indo-pacific in the tropics is quite homogeneous the animals are spread all the way kind of from the red sea through asia all the way out to hawaii but as soon as you get into the temperate waters they're all divide they can't mix so the animals you get you know um, in the pacific northwest uh, of america in america and canada are completely different from the animals you get in australia are completely different to the animals you get in japan um, so i love temper diving because each place is so unique um, but um, i do like a wetsuit which one person living person would you least like to be on a liverboard with i think the person i'd, I'd um, least like I um, like to be focused on my photography underwater and I like to travel with other underwater photographers. So I think people who want to tell me tall tales of diving are not, not my, not my favourite company on a liverboard. I like to be in the photo zone. So you sidestep naming someone there. Yeah, very, you did yeah. that well. You did that well. But you're not allowed to sidestep this one. This is the key issue okay. that we are exploring yeah. at Go Dive in 2020. This is what everybody wants to know. Alex, if you were stranded on a desert island, which one diver at the show would you choose to be there with you purely as a source of food in the event you had to resort to cannibalism? Oh, I don't know. Because, you know, I think it's got to be a good quality uh, of food. You know, it's not about quantity, it's about quality. And I think, you know, I have to say that Steve Baxter looks in great shape. You know, that's got to be some prime cuts on there. So you would absolutely eat Steve Baxter if you had I think so, yeah. There's, there's a lot of prime, prime meat there. <laughs> If there were, final question, if there was one final thing, one not one final thing, but one overall thing that you could change about diving to encourage more new people to take up the sport, what would it be? I think actually what would be amazing is if for one day a year the oceans were completely transparent and all the people on the land could just look from the edge of the sea and see all the amazing things we see. Because I think if more people could see what we see underwater, they'd all want to be down there doing it. So I think if one day uh, the waters around the UK, around the world went completely translucent, they could all see how amazing it was down there. Um, and then I think we get a huge, and then everyone would want to be underwater all the time. Brilliant. Absolutely love that. Cheers, Alex. Hey, no worries. Thank you. Thank you very much.